Hey guys, this is Patrick from SH. Today we're going to take a look at the Microtech CRS 3171G 16S Plus RM switch. Now this is a 16 port 10 gigabit ethernet SFP plus switch that has an MSRP of around $400. But street pricing is more like say $350, which makes this switch insanely affordable for homes, offices, budget co-location, you name it. Now Rohit has STH's full review on the STH main site, which we're gonna link in the description. If you're at work and you prefer to read it, go for it there. It also has a little bit more information that we're not gonna cover in this video because we do more complete reviews on the main site. So let's start with looking at the CRS317's physical layout. The first thing I wanted to point out, even before getting into the ports, is that the switch is significantly larger than the 8-port CRS3019 that we reviewed earlier. Now the RM at the end of the 16-port model means that this is a rack mount switch. Now CRS3019 1G 8S Plus IN switch, the IN actually means it's a desktop switch in Microtik. I don't know, num model numbering, I don't know what you want to call it, but that's what the INSEN stands for. Now you can stick rubber feet onto this unit if you really wanted it to be a desktop switch, but it's really designed for rack mounting. It's perfectly at home in two post racks since it's relatively lightweight. And in fact, you know, the, the rack gears don't even lend themselves to four post rack mounting. I mean, it's really just meant for you know, sticking on one side of a rack. Looking at the front of the Microtik CRS317, one can see 16 SFP plus ports, and that is a big upgrade over the CRS309, which only has eight ports. And part of the reason that this has to be a bigger form factor, rack mount form factor, is because Microtik needed the room to be able to place this many ports on the switch. Now above the ports, you can see some giant air vents, and this is an actively cooled switch, whereas the CRS309 is a passively cooled switch, which means that the CRS317 has fans. So it's not gonna be completely silent. On the front, you're also gonna see a serial console port along with a one gig ethernet port. And that one gig ethernet port is really designed to be a management port. And it's very similar to what we see on our higher end switches. For example, in the STH lab, we use a Dell Z9100 ON 32 port 100 gigabit ethernet switch that has a one gigabit out of band management port and also has a serial port. I mean, the idea here is that you can put your management interface on a separate physical network from your data network and segment your network that way. Now, while this may seem like a trivial feature at first, it's actually a really big deal. Many of the lower end switches from companies like Netgear that compete in this price segment don't have an out of band management port and sometimes they don't even have a serial console port. Even though the Microtik CRS317 is a lower cost switch, it actually has a lot of features that we would associate with the higher end switches, which simply isn't something that one would expect. At this point, we should probably should mention that we just did a review of the Microtik S Plus RJ10 module. Now that module is important for understanding why this switch is so versatile because you can use those SFP Plus to RJ45 converters to you know, convert to 10 base t or even n base t you know, two and a half gig or five gig bit ethernet devices. And so you can use those devices with this switch without having to add another one specifically for them. So if you only have like one or two devices, it's way easier to go that route. Sure, the switch modules cost a little bit, but you know, and they also use, I guess, a decent amount of power, like two watts each or something like that. But still, in many cases, using these converter modules allows you to consolidate with a single switch rather than switching and using multiple devices. So although we recommend using the Microtik version of this module, Rohit has also been doing an entire series where we're testing different low cost modules and seeing what capabilities they have for the SFP plus to the 10 G base T market. So you can check that series on the STH main site. We're testing a huge number of modules. We're going through at least once a week and we found some of the modules are better than others and some have features that are undocumented. So it's definitely worth following that series if you're interested in this type of interface conversion. Okay, so all of these modules we're testing in Microtik switches, since the Microtik switches do not enforce strict coding. And so you're gonna see a lot of the modules are Cisco coded third-party modules, but we're not really finding any issues so far using them in the Microtik CRS317. It doesn't seem to enforce specific encoding. Moving to the back of the switch, we have some pretty standard features for the Microtik CRS series. Something you're gonna see is dual AC input. And this actually has redundant internal power supplies, which means you can use them with A and B power in the data center. If you have A and B feeds in your data center, or you could use them with a wall outlet plus a battery backup like UPS system. And another option is that you can just use it in the event that the power supplies fail or one of them fails and you have a second one running, which keeps the switch online. Redundant power supplies are a feature that you simply don't usually see in 10 gigabit switches in this price range. I mean, this is under $400 switch. It's really cool that Microtik has decided to include them here. I mean, Microtik isn't just doing this on the CRS-317 either. They're even doing it on lower end switches and across their CRS line. 
An example of that is that we saw the very inexpensive, it's like a $135 switch, right? The CRS305, which is like a four port, 10 gigabit ethernet switch, it includes dual power inputs. In higher end switches, you usually see, you know, redundant power supplies that are hot swappable and the switch doesn't have that feature. Still, it's a big differentiator at this end of the market that aims to bring you know, more feature parity with higher end network switch gear, even though this is a very low cost platform. Another big feature that you're gonna see on the rear of the switch is a cutout for two 40 millimeter cooling fans along with a giant heatsink. After the switch gets through its boot process, if you don't have a ton of like high powered SFP plus modules in the switch, it actually runs silently or nearly silently. You're definitely going to want to update the firmware, especially if you have an early model like we do. Um, it seems like some of the early firmware was kind of louder and now the newer firmware actually makes the switch much quieter. So if you're using the SFP plus to 10G base T converters that we mentioned earlier, you're gonna hear that fan and it's not exactly silent since the power consumption and heat, you know, kind of vary with the modules used and those modules use a lot of power, generate a lot of heat. So if you're gonna use a lot of them, it's gonna get loud. Now we're gonna try doing a little bit of B-roll here with an x -Tech sound meter to give you some idea of what this whole thing sounds like. We don't have our full networking setup in their studio. So we're just gonna plug in a couple of modules and let them warm up and see if we can get the fans to spin up. Since we already did the product photography, here's a quick look inside the switch. So you can see the heat pipes leading to that large heat sink in the rear. You can also see dual internal power supplies. They're kind of in an enclosure themselves and most users are never gonna open up the switch, but we just kind of wanted to show you, you know, what's inside. Now it's time to talk about one of the less glamorous aspects of the switch. And really it's a less glamorous aspect of pretty much all of the CRS line. And that's performance. Performance is basically a Jekyll and Hyde affair. On one hand, if you're just using the switch as a layer two switch, performance is basically line rate. You run all the 16 ports at full speed, full duplex, and that's a great result. However, once you start moving to the world of like layer three switching, doing more advanced features like routing, you know, trying to do some kind of firewall on the switch, you're gonna start hitting the processor. And the processor on the switch is actually the same dual core model that we would find on the eight port CRS3019. And that's an 800 megahertz ARM 32 bit dual core processor, it's just not fast. The big difference is that the CRS317 has twice the RAM at one gigabyte. When you start utilizing layer three capabilities, what you're going to notice is that performance is absolutely atrocious. Again, you know, in this price range is about what we would expect. And we generally tell people that the CRS line is really a layer two switch. Line. If you think about it like that, and you're not gonna do any firewalls, you're not gonna do any routing, nothing on that Allen device, you're just gonna use it kind of as a simple link, then you're gonna be okay. And the CRS3017 will work absolutely great for you. Another really underestimated feature in this switch is the fact that there's both WebFig browser-based configuration utility, as well as Microtech's Winbox solution. Now both have a great GUI that those who don't wanna delve into the realm of Microtech CLI you know, can take advantage of. For novice admins, this helps and is actually something that you don't often see, you know, on the higher end switches. And so the web and Winbox interfaces do add extra security concerns. So, you know, you of course wanna do some security hardening before deploying these things. You know, they come with pretty easy default passwords, for example. So if you're deploying them in the edge or data center, you definitely wanna go take care of that, especially because there are greater security surfaces. But at the same time, you get something cool. Summing this whole thing up, there's a few things that we really need to put in context. First, Microtech is doing a great job producing inexpensive but well-featured layer two switches that don't really have a great direct competitor in the market. The line is so innovative that the CRS305, which is the $135 model we reviewed last year, won one of only our four STH Editor's Choice Awards that we gave out in 2019. We don't give a lot of these awards out. We gave out four last year, but Microtech got one. Talking about some of Microtech's other switches actually brings up a very interesting comparison. For example, the Microtech CRS309 is an eight port switch, but it's completely silent and it's a little less expensive, which means it's selling for about $120 less than this switch or about like $15 a port less. You know, sitting above the CRS317, there's a CRS326 24S plus 2Q plus RM, which, you know, adds eight more SFP plus ports plus two 40 gig ethernet QSFP plus port. Of course, that switch is gonna use more power. It's gonna be uh, noisier. I mean, it's 
very very loud actually but you know you can either go up or down in the microtix crs stack and actually find something that's you know pretty good at the same time the crs 317 is a really good implementation of 16 port SFP plus switch it's not perfect by any means but taking the context of the switches price in this range or even a few hundred dollars more it may be the most complete package on the market today it has a lot of features that you know look more like an enterprise switch and that's kind of cool even though you're not paying ginormous pricing for it now if you have one or if you're thinking of getting one it's absolutely great i have one i've been using for many quarters already and it's worked absolutely phenomenally Thanks for watching this video and enduring our new studio setup while we break it in. We're still working on getting this new setup working exactly how we want it. It's not quite there yet, but while you're here, why don't you check out the STH main site or you know maybe even the full review of the Switch, which you can find in the description. We're planning to make more videos this year, so please subscribe, turn on alerts, so you can see more videos from STH when they get posted. You can also check out what we've already done and posted a bunch of stuff on YouTube, and we have tons of like 10 years of content on the STH main site. So thanks again for watching and we'll see you soon.